everybody it's Michelle and I've got a really quick and easy healthy sheet pan supper for you today we're gonna do salmon and veggies and it is so super easy and everything cooks together in the oven only one pan to clean up I've got my baking pan in here just any sort of sheet pan and for my vegetables to go along with my salmon I'm gonna be using yellow squash asparagus and tomatoes we're going to wait a little while to add the tomatoes because those don't need to cook as long we're also not going to add our salmon until a little bit later also so i'm going to go ahead and cut up my squash and i'm just going to cut away any little bad areas in the skin and i'm going to cut that in half lengthwise and then slice that so that we've got little half moon shapes my asparagus and I've shown you guys this before but I'm going to go ahead and show you again I like to take each stalk of asparagus and give it a break anything that breaks loose at the bottom wherever that breaks that part is tough that part done I'm going to go ahead and cut them into about one inch pieces maybe inch and a half something like that now I'm going to drizzle them with a little bit of avocado oil this is my favorite healthy oil to cook with but you can add olive oil or whatever is your favorite healthy oil just a little bit and then I'm going to toss all of those together to kind of coat them with that avocado oil and spread them out like I said we're not adding our tomatoes or salmon yet so we're going to go ahead and let them have the full area of the pan. I'm going to give them a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm going to go ahead and use iodized salt and I'll tell you guys kind of how I do when it comes to salt. I use iodized salt when I'm cooking and then if I want to re-salt at the table then I use pink Himalayan salt. At one point I had done away with iodized salt altogether just to get rid of the regular table salt and try to get what I thought was a healthier salt with the Himalayan and it is healthier it's lower in sodium and it's good for you in a lot of ways it is even naturally rich in iodine but not quite enough like the iodized and I had gotten rid of that for a long time and it took a long time to get to me but I ended up actually iodine deficient and it's not a good thing so I added back in my iodized just for cooking and I still use the Himalayan at the table when I re-salt. And I'm also going to put some freshly ground black pepper. And that's all. I think these vegetables are wonderfully flavorful on their own. So I've got my oven preheated to 425. I'm going to pop these in for a few minutes, about 7 minutes or so maybe because they need a few minutes longer cooking time than the tomatoes and the salmon. After that, we'll pull them back out, add our tomatoes and salmon, and finish it up. Okay, and those have had seven minutes, and I'm going to also go ahead and give them a little bit of a toss. And I'm also going to scoot them down to one side to make room for everything else. Okay, so next we're going to add our tomatoes, and I'll show you guys what I did with them. I went ahead and chopped these up yesterday. I'm using Roma tomatoes. I chopped them up into about one inch chunks, de-seeded, and turned them upside down onto a napkin, just in the little styrofoam tray that they came in from the produce section. 
and that way they had time for some of the moisture to absorb out of them because if they have all the moisture that they had to start with then they're going to become very mushy in the oven so I'm just going to go ahead and rake those off into there and actually I changed out the napkin once to make sure that it wasn't on a wet napkin then they would just remain soggy and this way we get a lot of that moisture out of there I find that cooking tomatoes is kind of hard to do without getting them mushy but this does help a little bit to get some of that moisture out of there ahead of time and to not hardly put them in there for quite as long as everything else and I'm going to go ahead and give it another little shake of salt Another couple grinds of pepper, just lightly, enough to accommodate our extra amount of veggies. And we're also going to go ahead and put our salmon on here. And the salmon is something else that I went ahead and started preparing yesterday because mine was frozen. And if you guys have fresh, by all means use fresh. I did purchase this frozen, but even if I purchase fresh, I bring it home and put it in the freezer anyway. I live kind of far out away from the stores and things. I don't like to go very often, so anything that I do buy, I freeze it so that it keeps for a longer time and I can shop for longer each time by doing that. So in doing so, they do kind of have a lot of moisture. So I thawed them out a day ahead of time and then sopped up a little bit of the moisture with some napkins. And I have done it this way plenty of times and it works perfectly and it turns out wonderful in the end. So another little drizzle of avocado oil or olive oil or whatever you choose and a little salt and pepper on that as well. Actually more than a little pepper. I like my salmon sort of encrusted with black pepper. It's really good. And I'm just going to take the back of my utensil and just kind of press that in so the pepper gets embedded into the salmon. And it will be so good. And back into the oven for about another 15 minutes. Okay, that's 15 more minutes. A total of 22 minutes in the oven and it is done. And we've still got some texture left to our tomatoes thanks to preparing those a day ahead of time and drawing out some of the moisture. We've got a little bit of browning just barely on our asparagus and squash and the salmon looks gorgeous. So it's just that quick and easy to make a sheet pan supper. I love sheet pan suppers these days because they're so quick and easy and easy cleanup. I just did mine straight in the pan today, but if you wanted to line that with some heavy duty aluminum foil, then that would be even easier cleanup. You wouldn't even have any dishes to wash. So there is supper for two, and if you wanted to, you could put a little more salmon on there. Sometimes when I'm cooking for more than just the two of us, I'll use two sheet pans, do one of all vegetables, and then do the meat on another pan. Still just as quick and easy, and if you line them with full, zero cleanup, even for a crowd. And you can use any combination of veggies that you like. You could throw some onion and bell pepper in there, maybe some broccoli, whatever is your favorite. As long as they're cut to about the same size, they're all going to have about the same cooking time, so it's going to work out great. So let me know what kind of sheet pan suppers you guys like, and I may do some more of these in the future. So don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, give me a like over on my Facebook page, and be sure to join our Facebook group. Also, follow me on Pinterest and Instagram, and don't forget to visit my blog. I'll have the links to all of those in the description below, so be sure and check them out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.